and welcome to our Facebook Live interview with our newest author, uh, Esther Lovejoy. We are here to interview her tonight about her book launch today, Big Steps, Little Steps. So thank you for being here. We're glad you're here. Uh, before I forget, I'm probably going to have to make this announcement a couple of times. Be sure to leave a comment because we will have giveaways tonight and we choose from the commenters to, you know, who we give away those prizes. We will be giving away a print copy of the book and a, a digital copy of the book. So yes, enter your comments. If you have questions for Esther as we go through the interview, put them in the comments and we will uh, be sure they get answered. So welcome Esther, I'm glad you're here. Thank you, it's nice to be here. Yeah. Um, well, let's start off with the question of what prompted you or what was your inspiration, reason behind writing Big Steps, Little Steps? Well, it, the interesting thing is yeah. when it, it's, it's a woman named Aunt Lena and, and she was in our church when I was a teenager and she was an elderly woman and everybody called her Aunt Lena. The whole church called her Aunt Lena. And I can remember when we had testimonies and, and Aunt Lena would stand up and she would say things like, I just want to go on with the Lord, or I just want to get deeper with the Lord, or I just want to draw closer to the Lord. And as a teenager, that really struck me for two reasons. One is the realization that she didn't feel like her journey was over. Um, it's easy as teenagers to look at older people and think that they just have arrived, but she didn't feel like her journey was over. And that really inspired me to always want to feel like there was more in my relationship with the Lord. But also, Aunt Lena was an example to me. And, and that encouraged my own heart as a, as a teenager. And so part of the reason for wanting to write Big Steps, Little Steps was that very same thing. I want now to be an encouragement to other people as they're walking with the Lord and in their journey with the Lord. And, and so I guess I want to be Aunt Lena. I want to be the one that is still going, that's still following the Lord, still following hard after him, wanting to go deeper, wanting to draw closer. But I also want to be an encouragement to those that are also on this journey. I really enjoyed uh, your book. There's just, there's always, yeah, so much depth to what you give the reader. And it prompts a lot of thought, you know, way more than other devotionals that I've read. So a lot of what you talk about in the book, you've, you've walked yourself. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's wonderful because it's it's really, uh, uh, it's like transferring <laughs> um, on things that the Lord is teaching me, the things that the Lord has taught me and shown me and revealed to me as I've walked with him. And, and you know, um, I'm at an age of life and a stage of life where I just love to encourage younger women and say, it's not always easy. This is not a journey that's without times that are very difficult. Um but it is always worth it. It is always worth it. When, when I was a freshman in college, I came across a poem that became very quickly my life's prayer. And it was simply, my goal is God himself, not joy nor peace, not even blessing, but himself, my God. And then this important phrase, tis his to lead me there, not mine, but his at any cost, dear Lord, by any road. And, and the Lord picks roads sometimes that we wouldn't pick but always the end result is that they're leading us toward him and he knows that and and so i just i'm i just get excited to encourage younger women that even the rough spots in the road are worth it because of they're leading to him yeah that that's quite a commitment you know no matter what that you're taking that road that the lord is leading you down there are so mm -hmm. many christians um that that aren't doing that. I mean, they're living kind of a nominal life with Christ. Mm -hmm. um, and kudos to you. I mean, it's tough. A walk of faith. Yeah. It's it's not it's not necessarily an easy life. I mean, it's just one of commitment every day um, because of the things that come our way. And it's like, like yes. you said, no matter what, Lord, this is a road you have me on, and I trust you. So, and, and look at the alternative. The alternative is that we're stumbling along on our own 
And this way we know we have a guide. We know we have someone who has planned this. We know we have somebody who's walking with us, who helps us, who encourages us, who guides us, who directs us, you know? Um, and, and so I, I'd much rather do that. I'd much rather have the confidence that even the hard steps uh, that God will bring good out of them and he has them planned uh, for my good. Uh, and I think there's a tremendous encouragement. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, tell us how you came about with the title. I actually love the title of this book. <laughs> um, it's it's taken from the James Harriet books. Um, James Harriet, if, if you're not familiar, you should read them. They're wonderful. Um, he was a veterinarian in uh, England in the day in the Dales. And he tells the story of a farmer who was used to walking through his fields and walking around his farm just with big steps and, and able to move forward, you know, unencumbered and unhindered. And he tells about the fact that this farmer said to him one day that he had gone into the big city and he said, I couldn't walk. He said that I was jostled around and there was people all around me. And he said, I could only take big steps and little ones, big steps and little ones. And, and I just thought, what a picture of our walk with the Lord so often. Um, the world jostles us, cares and concerns jostle us, busyness, so many things just push us one way and another. And sometimes we find ourselves just taking big steps and little ones. Um, but those are big steps and little ones that lead us again to, to a, a path that God has planned for us. Yeah. So each step is worth it. It is. And, and I can totally relate to that. Uh, while we were living in Europe, we visited a town. I don't even remember what town it was that we visited when I first got over there with the kids, but there were just so many people mm -hmm. on the sidewalk. I suppose it'd be a lot like what New York city would be like yeah. in Chicago. And man, I tell you what, I was holding tight to my kids' hands because I knew if I didn't, they they would just get swept away with. Yeah. Them. Yeah. You know, yeah. They were small. So, so yeah. And, and that's, what's nice about our walk with God, you know, rather than doing it alone like you said when we're walking with god we are walking with someone he is holding mm -hmm. our hand mm -hmm. we we need to remember that that he's yeah. right there beside us and we we're not doing it alone and that's for me that's very comforting to it know is and a, a number of our chap a number of the chapters in in the book or, or sections of the book deal with talking about who is the one that's walking with us and, and the fact that he's our faithful companion and our and walking with one who loves us and there's just so many chapters that, that are just really a, an attempt to reveal again the encouragement of the one who's walking with us that makes all the difference it, it matters who you walk with it matters who you walk with. oh yes definitely and that's a great segue into uh lori and question how do you keep track of stories that you use in your writing and does just one come to you or do you have a story bank? I don't have a story bank as such. Um, some of these in some in this devotional book, some of these were taken from over the years from uh, I ha used to have a radio blog and some of them came from that or inspired by that. Some of them from my own blog. Um, and over the years, speaking at retreats and conferences, you know, things that I've referenced in stories. So it was just kind of a resource I had from from a number of years. Well, and you have such a wonderful memory. Um, you you pulled from anecdotes from when your kids were small and, you know, different times of your life. And in all honesty, I there's a lot of that I just don't remember. So, and that's what I think that's kind of what endears me to your book is that you give us such wonderful personal stories that we can relate to um, in the devotions. Is there a particular process of writing that you like more than the others? Wow, that's an interesting question. Um, I don't really, I, I don't really, I've never really analyzed how I do that. Um, usually if the Lord lays something on my heart, if I get an idea from him or he's just shown me something in scripture or taught me something, I, I like to write it down. Uh, I journal. So maybe that's where a lot of this comes from too, from my own journaling. Um, I, I just find it easy to express myself by writing. Um, and, you know, the first book I ever wrote 
really came about because I had a wonderful, loving husband who just kept pushing me and, and encouraging me. And, and um, so I think it's, I, I don't know that I have one particular answer to that. I, I think it has varied somewhat with different things that I'm writing. Well, I know a lot of writers say they, you know, they like that draft stage and they don't like the editing stage or, you know. Oh, oh. you know what? I kind of enjoy the editing stage and, and I, 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 you might be surprised to hear that. <laughs> but it's kind of interesting to see somebody else look at your your writing with fresh eyes and, and you know, suggest things. And, and that kind of is just kind of a refinement of, of what. But I love the fact that they allow it still to be your voice that's heard. It's, it's your your writing and, and but they just kind of I said it's like it's like giving somebody a book and they do the hair and put on makeup. <laughs> You're presentable. I never, thought, I never thought of it that way at all. <laughs> um, do you have a particular place that is more inspirational for you as you write? Do you listen to music while you write? Do you, you like to go outside? I don't listen to music usually while I write. Um, for, I'm right now at, at a cottage that we have in upstate New York at a Christian camp. And that's a very quiet, peaceful place. And I enjoy writing here. Um, at home, I just, I need to be, usually I need to be alone. I just go someplace alone and, and sit and write. Um, yeah, so that's, yeah, I, I like quiet. Like quiet, yeah. Well, I, I like to listen to music. I find that it um, it helps bring out the creative brain. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Because I think as authors, we just are different. You know, we just each find kind of our own little groove and, and the way that we write that's comfortable for each of us. Uh, another question from Laurieann. When did you know you had a book and not just a call to write? Oh, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> I sat down at a little table with a little tiny red table with nursery rhymes on it or nursery characters on it when I was about seven years old, probably had just figured out how to write um, and decided I wanted to write a book. And it, it's an interesting thing because this is such an absurd thing to think about now, but the title of my book at the age of seven was When Revival Comes. <laughs> and I have no <laughs> idea why I felt I could, I have no idea why I felt I would approach such a lofty topic as that. I've often <laughs> wished I still had those pages. I'd love to see what I had to say about that at the age of seven. And obviously the book is gone um, or whatever I wrote, it never made it, but it is gone. But that desire to write. And, and I think I was sharing this actually yesterday at the launch. I think that the, the verse that talks about God gives us the desires of our heart. I've always thought it also means that sometimes he puts the right desires in there, mm -hmm. the things he wants to fulfill in our lives. And so I think at a very early age, he put that desire to write. Um, I knew a woman as a little girl, I knew a woman who wrote under the pen name Zenobia Bird. She wrote in the 40s. I wasn't around then. I knew her as an old lady. <laughs> um, but she wrote Christian romance novels. She was a single lady. I often wonder where she got her material. Um, <laughs> but I remember looking at those books on her shelf and thinking, she wrote those. And just thinking that was so amazing. But for years, I wrote in ministry. I was, I was a pastor's wife, and I wrote... Uh, in newsletters, and I wrote children's programs, and I, I did a lot of that kind of writing. And it really wasn't until recent years that I actually wrote a manuscript that was that was published. I always kind of joke that I'm kind of the grandma Moses of writing. <laughs> Started later, <laughs> but I love the fact that God put the desire in there when I was a little girl, knowing that He fully intended to fulfill it. Um, and so, Big Steps, Little Steps is my third book. You know, since you re can remember the title, I would be inclined to say, God, do you want, you know, do you want me to write this book? You know, oh, that's here, interesting. Here's the desire that I had <laughs> when I was seven years old, and here's the title, and it, it does, is this something that you have for me? I mean, because that's interesting. When you think about the title, I mean, it's like, wow, how prophetic can that be, especially yeah. thinking about the times that we are in now? Yes, yes. Yes, absolutely. Well, I've said I thought this might be my last book, but who knows now, Deb? You may have just you may have just encouraged another one. 
Well, and, and I'm kind of sorry to hear that you're thinking this is your last book because um, I enjoy your stuff. But Thank I you. was going to ask, do you think you would ever um, venture into the world of fiction? Absolutely not. <laughs> I have such an admiration for people that can write fiction. I am so impressed. I read your book and it was just so wonderful. I just can't fathom sitting down and, and doing all that. No, that's not that's not in me, I don't think. I love what I do. I love writing uh, encouragement spiritually and, and things that I know. And, and I love, I don't mind reading fiction, but I'm, yeah, that's not my gift. I will let that up to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. I've got a question from Dee Dee. How does this book compare to um, Unnatural Beauty? Oh, this book is so totally different because uh, it, it, because it's a devotional, um, and, and so it, it it just it doesn't have one focus that is developed through the whole book, like an unnatural beauty did. Um, and an unnatural beauty is, is still a book I'm very passionate about because I, I'm passionate about the message of that book. Um, this is a totally different thing because it is a devotional book. And, and for those of you who haven't heard this already, I love to call it a guilt-free devotional book because it's not dated. So you don't open it up and think, oh my goodness, I'm already two weeks behind. Um, there's no dates. Uh, it's the page. The it's not numbered. Um, it is topical, and so you're able to open it up and and find an area that you might really have a need in that particular time. Whether it's one of struggling with trust or faith or feeling the love of God um, uh, at times of worry. So there's different topics. There's actually twelve topics and and seven devotionals in each topic. Um, so yes, it's very, it's very different than both of my other books, uh, but in Unnatural Beauty, yes, it's a, it's a different focus. Yeah. So, so in that sense that it, it would be, it would definitely be a book that you could just pick up anytime, you know, yes. you feel yes. like you need some encouragement or some guidance in a particular area. And That's exactly right. Straight to that page. Yes. Yes. In fact, it's interesting because I have a, a woman already wrote to me who was able to get an early copy. And and she said that very thing. She said, this has been so wonderful because I can pick it up and find something that I need for that day. Not just because it's dated for that day, but because it's a topic that I know I need to be, you know, hearing from the Lord about. Um, well, and Lori is asking, how did you come up with that idea? an undated devotional? You know, that's interesting because I'm not even sure I know the answer to that. I guess because it, they began to fall into place under specific topics, I began to see different devotionals that kind of fit here. And then, and, and it was the idea of big steps, little steps. So there were steps of encouragement and steps of faith and steps of, and so it began to just fall into place under different topics. And then it just seemed like, it needed to stay that way rather than have it be like, you know, one for every day of the month or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and quite honestly, it might also have come from my own times of knowing that I'm already behind in a devotional book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tend not to let that bother me. If I miss yeah. a day, I miss a day. Yeah. Thank you. Um, let's go ahead and draw a winner for our Kindle. And we'll move on to the next question. And this could probably sound a little weird. Last month, I uh, one of the commenters asked Robin about whether she had a favorite snack while she was working on her books and writing. Uh, well, you know, I think she mentioned chocolate. You know, what woman doesn't mention chocolate, right? But she mentioned one particular one that was really out of the ordinary and that she would go to when she was really stuck, and that was olives. Oh, isn't <laughs> so we, we all had kind of a good time over that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> so my question to you is, do you have um, a favorite snack while you're writing or something that you do when you get, you know, when you're stuck and you're just like, oh, I just don't quite know what to do next? I don't think I have one particular snacks I like without a doubt, but I don't, 
I, I'm trying to think when I'm writing um, what I would get up and go to. Um, and see, here's the problem. I don't drink coffee and I don't drink tea. I, I'm not fully an adult yet, I think. I think <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't achieved full adulthood yet because so I don't even have a cup of coffee beside me or a cup of tea. I would like to drink tea. I've given it many chances, but I just still don't. Um, so, you know, I have a, a water jug beside me and, and yeah, that's interesting. I, I don't know that I have one particular thing. <laughs> well, that's okay. We're all different. Um, so let's see if I can go through some of these other comments. Um, is there anything in particular that you hope readers will get from this book? I think most of all, probably just encouragement, encouragement on their journey, encouragement that this journey is so worthwhile. And, and just even to know that there's there's those who have gone before that are cheering them on, that that uh, that can say to them, keep going. This is worth it. This is this is a, a wonderful journey. You know, again, those hard places, we're going to go through hard places, whether we're a believer or not. But I can't fathom what it would be like to go through some of the hard times I've gone through in my life without the Lord, without knowing I was walking with somebody through that very, very difficult time. Um, without knowing that there was somebody that knew what the end of it was going to be and it would lead me to that. Um, I, I just can't even imagine trying to do that. So I guess if I had to sum up one thing, it would be I, I'd love this to be an encouragement. I, I'd really love this to just encourage uh, women in their walk with the Lord. Right. And I did think of a snack. Is it too late? No. <laughs> oh, this is I'm going to do a this is going to sound like a commercial. Um, I love peanut butter M&Ms. Um, and that's true. I will go get a handful. I have a little grandma street jar in my house that my grandchildren are very familiar with. And it always has peanut butter M&Ms in it. I've never tried the peanut butter M&Ms. But I love do. They're wonderful. Um, I, I like the peanut M&Ms. So I can't I like imagine them. that I wouldn't like the peanut butter M&Ms. But yeah, they're very good. Yes, that, that would be my go-to snack. And my confession. You have them both. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question for Tammy. What does your family think of your writing success? It, it My family's very encouraging about all of this is wonderful. My husband uh, passed away not too long ago and he was, he was my, I didn't need a publicist. <laughs> he just was my encourager in my writing. He was sometimes my nagger. He called it encouragement, but it was borderline nagging often. Um, <laughs> get me to write, to keep encouraging me to write. Um, and then he just, he was wonderful about just really being excited about uh, the end result. And and um, my children have been just really wonderful. They, they've been very encouraging. And, and it was neat because um, my granddaughter actually read my last book, An Unnatural Beauty. And it was it was wonderful to get the response from somebody in her age. She was college age. And that's an age I really wanted to reach out to. And and her response was, Grandma, everybody needs to read this. And, and so I was very encouraged to, to have her feedback from that, you know, uh, from somebody in that age category. Yeah. Well, and that, a wonderful segue because Lori, Lori Ann is asking, what is your intended audience? And is there a particular age group or life situation that the book is aimed for? This particular book, I would say probably no. I feel like we're, I guess because of Aunt Lena, the, the journey doesn't end until we are with the Lord. Um, and so I feel like it, it, it would be an encouragement to somebody who's fairly new in their walk with the Lord, uh, who is, is struggling to feel the reality of God's presence and his, with us and is learning, still learning a lot of these things. I feel like that would be very encouragement, or very encouraging to them. But I also feel like it's an encouragement to to those who have walked for more years with the Lord, just to remember again who He is and what He wants to be to us as we walk with Him. So for this book, I would say no. I, I don't have a particular. Um, it's certainly not a particular age group, and and I think it's it's not so much. Um, numerical age as much as even your spiritual where you are spiritually 
<clears throat> well, and I totally agree. I mean, I've been walking with the Lord for over 40 years, but there were still so many I think every devotion that I read made me stop and think about where am I at in that particular arena, the topic you were talking about mm -hmm. in my own walk. You know, was I learning? Was I growing deeper? Was I stagnant? You know, was I mm -hmm. learning? Um, and yeah, that. So, to, I mean, I do. I totally agree. It would be applicable for anybody that that yeah. picked it up. Well, and, and again, it's so important that you remember it's not written by an expert. It's written by somebody who's a fellow walker with you, who's on the journey with you. And, and just, you know, God is just some of the things that God has taught me and shown me about himself and his faithfulness and his love and his care. And, and just to be able to share those with other people is, is just such a privilege, really. Now you said you that you were a pastor's wife. So Peter was a pastor. Peter was a pastor briefly, but Peter is my second husband. Oh, okay. Because I was wondering. So I was thirty years in in ministry as a pastor's wife. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Well, and I was wondering if if things that he dealt with as a pastor, whether you drew on those yourself and they, that they found their way into the book. I don't, I don't think so much. Um, you know, over the years, I've been very privileged to uh, speak at retreats and conferences. And a lot of these things were born out of even God teaching me so I could then, you know, share with other people um, and my preparation. I've always said, whether I've taught a Sunday school class or a Bible study or spoken at a retreat or a conference, I love the preparation. I really love just being able to sit in the Lord's presence and have him teach me and, and show me things. And then I always end up saying to the Lord, if you can just bless the women I'm going to be sharing with, just even a portion of how you blessed me as I prepared, um, it, because it's just such a privilege to do that. So most of it really has come out of my own experiences and my own walk with the Lord and, and the things that he's so lovingly and gently taught me. Um, and, and shown me about himself. So, yeah, I think mostly it's been just from my own journey. Okay. Um, several questions here from Tammy. How long does it take you to write a book like this? Um, how often do you sit down to write? Oh, and are you sitting there for hours at a time <laughs> like I do? Or are you just there for a few moments? The answer to those is yes. <laughs> Because each of those at different times, um, you know, and and my life dictated that to some degree. Um, I was in ministry up until just until just recently, so my days were dictated by some of those things. For years, I was a caregiver to Peter's mother, and so I would find little blocks of time when she was napping or when she had gone to bed early. Um, so. You know, it's, I, I feel like I should have better answers than I'm coming up with for these things. But the truth of the matter is it has varied so greatly. Now, I will say this. There have been times when I have gone away um, for maybe a, one overnight or a couple overnights where I can just be really focused on spending time in prayer and, and in writing. Um, so there have been those times. And those are very, very wonderful. Um, and often my husband, Peter, would kind of encouraged me to do that. You just need to get away for a day or two, especially if I was getting ready to speak somewhere at a retreat and, and just have quiet time, just have time when you can really be focused. Um, and those are very, very special. But then there's other times when I write here a little, there a little, uh, because that's how my day is. Um, so I, I kind of liked sheltering in place during COVID because <laughs> we got to have longer, longer times that weren't interrupted. <laughs> Okay, we have a question from Dee Dee. Let's see, what is the theme or message you would like your readers to come away with after reading Big Steps, Little Steps? I'd love for them to be so in awe of the one who guides us and walks with us. I would love for them to just have a new sense of the wonder of the fact that this amazing God, who he is, is, is willing to be that personal. I mean, I, I just think that that's such amazing. I had an example of that just recently uh, of how incredibly 
personal God is. And he doesn't walk with large groups. He walks with us as an individual, aware of our needs, aware of what we're facing, what we're going through, and adequate for any one of those things. Um, and, and so I'd love for that to be ultimately the real thing where they come away with just such a renewed understanding of God and who he is and, and such an excitement about the fact that he's the one that walks with us and he's the one that's planned our steps and we can trust him. Um, and, and so I guess above all, I would like them to come away with just being totally in awe of God. Our, our walking companion. And, and then if there was to be a, a second thing, it would be that they'd be encouraged to just keep going, whether it's a big step or a little one, uh, to keep moving forward. Um, and, and again, to know that every step toward God is worth it. Every step toward God is worth it. I don't, And I don't know that we really think about it, but I would have to say that a lot of times, most people want to take those big steps all the time. Yes to be moving forward in, in big ways uh, and not just in their walk with God, but in things that they're, they're doing in general. I think that, I don't know if that's part of our makeup or not, mm -hmm. but, um, but I like that idea that, you know what, there's times when mm -hmm. yeah, we make giant leaps forward and we've taken big steps. And then there's times when we're just taking those little steps or even yes. baby steps. So then we need to, Give ourselves grace. We need to yes, say, this yes. is okay. This yes. is, you know, God's with me. God's got, God's mm -hmm. got this. And, you know, I'm walking with him and in his plan. And so this is good. Uh, let's see. Next question. We've got some really good questions tonight. Um, did you outline the devotional or write it as, as topics popped into your head? I, I did. I don't outline. I, I, you know, it's funny because in my high school and college days, in spite of the little eight year old or seven year old at the nursery <laughs> rhyme table, <clears throat> I decided I didn't like writing because you, you, they dictated a topic and then they gave you the little index cards and you had to write little outlines and write little things. And I thought, well, I don't like this. <laughs> And and um, and then when I got away from that, where I was able to write on my own what I enjoyed writing, I discovered, no, I, I really do like writing. I, the seven-year-old girl is still in there. Um, so, no, I've never been one to outline. Um, and then, you know, there were times that I, I had some devotionals and I'd suddenly think this fits in this part. This fits with this topic. Um, and I just watched it all kind of come together. Um, so there wasn't a, you know, a, a specific outline and plan, and I'm going to get so many things I need to write about this topic. Um, I, I, I'm probably breaking all the rules in terms of if anybody is listening to this that wants to learn how to be a good writer, but um, that's just, it's, it's how I've written. Well, and that's okay. I, I, I've heard a lot of writers say they don't like to outline it, and they can probably point to that same thing that in school this is how we had to do how mm -hmm. you know and if you have an a you have to have a b you know? yes so yeah. there were just these really strict rules and writing doesn't always fit into that kind of a structure no um, well i will say this i'll tell you where a lot of them came from a lot of them came from i had from my own quiet time i would be having my quiet time and think Oh my goodness, look what the Lord just showed me. And look at the excitement that it you find in these words and in this verse and or the encouragement or the help or the instruction. And so many of them came because the Lord had just shown me something and taught me something, and I would instantly go and and write it down. Um, so it really is kind of a lot of them are really an overflow of my own heart and what the Lord was showing me. So he he was guiding me through every step of the way. Pardon? So, well, he was guiding you every step yeah, of yeah, through yeah. that quiet time, you, you know. Yes, what absolutely. Know what to include. Um, so we've got Lori asking the same thing. Are you, you know, what's next for you? <laughs> Are you planning on, you know, do you have another book? Um, <laughs> well, I, I don't, but Deb might have one for me. I don't know. <laughs> I need to write that title down because I didn't, I didn't write it down. 
<laughs> That's funny because I've spoken often in these later years, I've spoken on, on revival. Um, I don't right now. Um, and I'm just waiting to see what the, the Lord has. Um, and and I, I've just come through a year of adjustment in terms of moving and, and my husband passing away. And so I've just needed to kind of readjust a lot of my life. Um, and, and we'll see once that's settled in, you know, if the Lord lays something on my heart. Yes, I, I definitely will. Well, and I have no doubt that he will. When, <laughs> when the time is right. We'll see. We'll see if I can do this without having my husband push and nag and encourage. <laughs> well, you you have plenty of friends around you. I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. I will say this about him. Um, this book is dedicated to my husband, Peter. And the reason it's my third book and finally being dedicated to him is the fact that he would never let me do that before. He would always say, no, no, don't dedicate to me. So when when Cross River contacted me and said, you forgot to put a dedication in. I said, oh, guess what I can do this time? <laughs> so the man who journeyed with me, the man who encouraged me in so many ways, not just as a writer, but but uh, spiritually, he just was a wonderful, wonderful partner in all of this. Um, so this book is dedicated to him. That's nice. That's great. Um, I want to encourage those that are here. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. Um, they have been very good questions and very interesting questions. If people want to get a hold of you, what's the best way to connect with you? I have a blog. Um, I'm not very faithful to it, but I do have a blog. Um, view from the sparrows nest uh, They can they can contact me through that. Um, and I don't mind. Is it OK if I give my email address? Um. I'm not sure. I guess it's through Cross River, maybe, huh? Yeah. Yes. If you want to contact me, I love to hear from I've gotten in the past, you know, letters and, and stuff that came through, uh, you know, a publisher. Um, and, and that's very encouraging to a writer because well, you're writing. when I speak at conferences, I'm looking out at faces. I see people and I talk to them afterwards. When you write, you don't see your readers. And so it's really wonderful when you get to hear from your readers, when you, you you know, when when you know that your heart's desire that the Lord uses the words you've written, that he's done that. That's always such an encouragement. It is. It's nice to hear from readers. And I'm pretty sure that um, your email address is probably in the book. Oh, it might be. Oh, that's tricky. So if you want my email address, you have to buy a book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hesitant to put it out there on a video because... I yeah, just, I don't want yeah. To that's why I asked because I thought I'm not sure I want to do that. I want to get spammed, but yes, it, it 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 is really nice to hear from readers. Yes. and I would encourage those of you that are here and those of you that listen to the recording, if you've done, if you have read the book, please uh, go to Amazon and leave a yes. review because those reviews are they're like gold for authors. They help give other buyers the social proof that it's a good book so please consider leaving a review um, yes, that is very helpful we live in a day and age when that's an important part of of a book one more question here before we end the night do you have any upcoming appearances i do i i have um a retreat this fall in new hampshire um that I'm going to be speaking at. And I, I love the topic. Um, we're going to speak on forever faithful, God's faithfulness. Um, and that is so my testimony. I mean, really, it is such my testimony is the faithfulness of God um, through all circumstances. And so I'm really excited about being able to share um, on that topic. Um, so, yeah, that's that's coming up in early November, I think, which will be here before we know it. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I'm looking forward to having the time with those women. Um, we have a comment from Beauty that I really like. We were, when we were talking about the reviews, she said, reviews are like peanut butter ends are to authors. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, I'm, I think I'm kind of out of questions, and we don't have any more in the comments. <clears throat> we are nearing 
745. We are going to leave the comments open for 24 hours before we um, draw our winners for our prizes. So yes, if you're listening to the recording, be sure to leave a comment if you would like to win a copy of the book. Um, and um, is there any, one, any last words that you have to share with the audience? Um, mm -hmm. I, it, would it be okay if I just had prayer? Sure. Let's just pray before we're done. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you are a God who is intimately involved in our lives and intimately involved in our journey. Uh, not only do you plan it, and you don't just point in a direction and say, go that way, you walk with us. And, and I just was thinking about the verse that talks about if we live in the spirit that we need to keep in step with the spirit. And I pray that will be true for each of us, whether they're big steps or little ones, that they will be steps that we take as we keep in step with the spirit of God. And we just thank you for this time together. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us tonight, Esther. Um, thank you. God's best on your book. And thank you. God's best for you as you move into the next chapter of your life. Thank you. Uh, viewers, again, I remind you to be sure to leave a comment um, in the next 24 hours. And I guess that's it. We, okay. we thank you so much, Deb. I appreciate it. And thank you for those who asked questions. That was they were very, very good questions. Oh, so, and sometimes it is hard. You don't have an answer, so it's and that's okay. Yeah, yeah I never thought about that. Yeah. So, uh, really enjoyed your answers, um, and it's been a great time. So, thank you. Good night, been. everybody, and we will see you next month at our next uh, live interview. Thanks again. <laughs>